OK, so this is about implement linear regression from scratch. So first we import something. Uh, we, can, we don't need to look into that. The key thing here, we have autograd, we have ND array, and we have a lot of plotting, and we have random number generators. So we first generate a data set. The pretty small data set, what we have is 100, 1,000 examples, two dimensions. So X is 1,000 by two matrix, it's a random matrix. Then we're gonna use a ground truth weight, which is the first element is two, the second is minus 3.4. And the bias, we're gonna choose 4.2. This is the ground truth we have. To generate the label, we just do X times the true weight plus B, and plus a noise here. The noise is a Gaussian noise here. So I'm gonna show you. And so did a little bit of code here. It's, a, it's writing uh, in the array, but it's pretty similar. Just generate numbers and uh, get the results. So the key thing here, we have features here. We have labels here. Then we can visualize, we can show that the second feature and the label. So because the linear regression, there's correlation between features and the labels. So, but we, ha we have noise here, so there's actually a lot of noise uh, around. <coughs> then, because we're gonna use a mini batch SGD, every time we're gonna random, we're gonna read the, our, we're gonna randomly sample some data to get the batch. So we're gonna show actually how this thing looks like. Now, let me, hmm. let me just show the code. So here we have, we give them features, we give them labels, and then we give them batch size. What we do is like, we firstly generate the index indices, and then we randomly shuffle it so we can generate the random indices. Every time, we're gonna read, we're gonna read batch size indices here, and then to, to get the indices is called a J. And we should, we should take Take means, given a set of indices, I take the row columns from the matrix, or take the row element from the matrix. So we generate J's, we usually it's like B uh, batch size randomly indices, and we pick up the data and pick up the labels. We use the Python yield here, which is a generate uh, iterator. So every time you can, it's, you don't, every time you don't need to, so let me, let me show how to use it. So every time you can using for x and y in this iterator. So every time you run for loop, you're gonna get x and the y, and then you run it again, you get another x and the y. So we're gonna show you, given the batch size equal to 10, we're gonna show you how to print x and the y. So x is two dimensions, 10, um, 10 examples. Y is another, uh, less 10 vector here. It's a 10 uh, real value numbers here. So that's a single batch. Okay. Then, how do you choose to initialize the model parameters? Here we're gonna using doubly randomly initialized by Gaussian distribution. It's zero min, and scale equals to uh, standard deviation equals to 0 0.01. Um, well, you don't want to use too large um, uh, values. It's cause you numerical instabilities. You don't want two small values of how to train. So that's another trade-off. Uh, we are gonna talk about more in the optimization details. So in most cases, using random numbers and with such deviation, uh, SD is good enough. For BIOS, we just initialize to zero. So okay, this is we pick up the initial W and the B. Then, because we're gonna compute the gradients with, res with respect to W and B, we attach gradients here. Again, we talk about the auto in the autograd. Now we can define the model. <coughs> in the model, given a batch of data X and a given weight and a B, we just using dot matrix multiplication to compute X times W and plus the bias using broadcasting. So we can get the prediction. It, it is the vectorized version of it. So we save in the function called the linear regression. Now the loss function, that is 
given y hat, this estimation, it's a, it's a vector. Also given the true label, it's another y, it's a vector, which is y hat minus y. And we do reshaping here because we want to match. Sometimes you cannot get the row vector, sometimes you get the column vectors. We run a reshape here so that make sure everybody have the same shape. Because a common mistake, if you get a row vector, if you get a column vector, if you minus it, by broadcasting, you get the matrix. <coughs> and to get the matrix, because you run autograd, this is a loss function. You run autograd, we can sum this matrix together to get a scalar. You get a no warning here. So that's actually, so we make a reshape here to guarantee that you do element-wise um, um, uh, 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 minus and they didn't do broadcasting. So we, mi uh, we minus y hat minus y and the power to two and divide by two. So here we actually didn't divide by the batch size here. So, but we can, we, we do that later. So then let's talk about SGD. So SGD here, the parameters is actually W and B. It's a list of parameters. The second term is called learning rate. The scalar we, we talked about later, uh, before. And the batch size. We divided by the batch size here. Yeah, for no reasons. So you just can put the batch size in the loss function. That's okay. Uh, but we just don't want the loss function to add another uh, hyperparameter. So then what do we do is like, for every parameters, we just minus learning rate times the gradients and divided by batch size. So that's just the HGD. Or you just call gradient descent. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, good. Um, then the training loop. Need a bit longer, but let me, let me just uh, show the code. So we first pick the hyperparameters. Um, the first I choose the linear rate equal to 0 0.03, well, by <laughs> no reasons. Then we choose the number of data passes to be three, another three, uh, by no reasons. Um, the network we're gonna choose is a linear regression. So I just call it a net and the loss function so that every, in letter, every train loop looks similar. And the loss function, we use a square loss. Then the training loop is like, in the first of four loop, we iterate over the data. So we're gonna do three paths of the data here, and then the second of four loop, every time I read the data batch, X and the Y. Then we put the fourth path in the autograd record here. We first put the X, X, WB into net to compute the estimation, and then compare to the true value Y to get the loss function here. Now then we call the loss function the backward to compute the gradients. Then once the gradients here, we just run SGD. The parameter here is just the WB because we already attached gradient before. Put the linear rate, put the batch size, and we update. For each batch, at the end of each batch, we just compute, we just compute the, the loss on the whole training data. Okay, and the print the results. So we're gonna see that in the epoch one, Yes, we have a little large loss, then we decrease and uh, until last we got a small number. Okay, so, yeah, um, so yes. <laughs> That's a good choice. <laughs> so last, uh, let's show that what we actually learned and comparing to the what actually we have before. Because we have true W, we have true B, then, um, we can evaluate, then we show that actually the, the errors in estimate action is pretty small. And so I can actually pr I can actually print W and print B. You can see that um, W is true B2 and minus 3.4, and B, what is B, um, is 4.2. So actually what we estimate is pretty close to what we have in the ground truth. Okay, so because we mentioned that what is the learning rate, what the batch size, I can show you some examples that, let me choose a very small learning rate. Choose a smaller one. And then remember that in the third epoch, we got a very low loss here. Let's compare it again. Well, oh, uh, we cannot do that because, yeah, because we didn't, 
reinitialize W. So let me reinitialize W to, to a random no number. Uh, attach gradient. So you see that if we choose a very small learning rate, that actually, if we have very large loss. So if I, if I cannot use a very large one, it's one, well, it works pretty well. This, so 0 0.03 is too small, let's do a larger one. Well, you get a lot of number. So because too large. Okay, so you should pick up the linear rate as large as possible to get the results. And the last notebook I'm gonna talk about how to use in Gruon to implement, to actually implement the thing thing. But in Gruon, not from the ND array. For ND array, we show how to build things from scratch. It's easy at this moment. But later on, if you have hundreds of layers, you, don't can, you cannot do use ND arrays. So I'm gonna show you how to use Gruon to do the things. So Gruon actually, so this is a similar thing. This is actually generated data set pretty similar to before. Uh, let me restart. So Gruon provides two things pretty useful, so actually three things. One is how to load the data. Gruon has a, it's a data module on Gruon. We import as G data. Uh, it's not Google data, but just uh, put a G here in, in case we want to use data as a variable before, uh, letter. We choose a batch size. This on the array, we just create a data set called an array data set. In the data set, we can access, in the data set, just uh, that's, a, that's a class you can index in any examples. Then given data set, we can put it into data loader, which is given a batch size, and the shuffle equals to two, randomly shuffle the data set, Every time you're gonna, re, gonna retain a data iterator, which can be used as exact as before, that every time we can 4x and y in this data iterator and get a data batch. Okay, the second different thing is that the linear model is called the, is called the dense layer or fully connected layer in neural network. And the output size is one because you only have a single output here. So, and Gruon is the neural network module, N module already defined what is a dense layer. You just compute, you just construct a dense layer and put it into a container called sequential container. This container gonna let you can stack multiple, it's like it's a list. You can stack multiple layers to get the new network. So this, we construct container only at a single layer. It's a single layer neural network. And the output, output size is one. So here we don't need to specify what the input size. So that's a key thing for Gruon. You don't need, because we, at this point we actually don't know what's the input size. So it, we figure out a letter where we give actual data into, into the network. So also Amazon have a bunch of initialization methods. For here, we can initialize using normal distribution and call it sigma, it's 0 0.01. We call net the network dot initialize and the given initialization methods. The loss function, um, the Gruon loss, Gruon have a loss module, define a bunch of loss functions. So here we just import the L2 loss. So square loss, also called L2 loss. So then training, we just tell you, okay, we have Gruon have a trainer. If you put the parameters, connect parameters means put all these parameters on the network because you, have, you maybe have multiple layers in that. The connect means you're gonna connect all these parameters on the networks. And get, give the parameters to the trainer and tell them, okay, I'm gonna use SGD here. SGD and the linear rate will be, and will be 0 0.03. So we don't need to implement the SGD function anymore. The trend is pretty similar as before. So we, again, we pick a number of epoch equal to three. For every epoch, we read the data, and again, we compute the forward pass, given x fit into the network, 
and compare the loss with the y, get the, get the final loss, and the, run the backward function. Because we define the trainer, which is SGD, we call the step function, and we pass the batch size into the trainer, which we are divided by the batch size to get the normalized gradients, and then we update the networks. Finally, you're gonna print the same thing. As pretty, so as, as you see that the result's pretty similar to uh, what we have previously. So in overall, that, um, that's a pretty template we're gonna use for, to describe every network. We're gonna first show how to use ND array or just a LumPy to implement things from scratch so that you can understand it. On the other hand, we're gonna show that how you're actually using Gruon to implement the things thing so that uh, you, in most cases, you build your applications, you're gonna use a group of predefined layers. It's more numeric stable and faster, uh, but you can, for your, home, uh, for your projects. Okay, so that's all for today. Um, next time we're gonna talk about